Have you ever felt the need to cover your big screen with a small screen to show the picture you're hiding on your big screen on the small screen? Then the Spectra XR5 might be one of the best options for you. Okay, all kidding aside, the Solpak XR5 dashboard is actually one of the best dashboards with one of the best SimUp integrations that I've seen. Typically, I don't really review dashboards anymore because it's all the same, but this one actually really stands out. Before we get into detail, the typical disclaimer, this product was provided by Solpak, but all the opinions and thoughts are my own. The price for the XR5 is 359 euros plus taxes, definitely on the higher side, but I think it's warranted in this case. We do have a very high quality case here made out of 6061 aluminum in a very nice matte black finish, looks very good in my opinion. In the middle we have the typical 5 inch Bocor screen with a resolution of 854 by 480 and also telemetry LEDs in a 4.15.4 structure. And also what's unique on this dash we have two buttons that are also backlit with two RGB LEDs each. And on the bottom we have a light bar with six LEDs which gives me some kid vibes from Knight Rider which I of course like since I'm German. And if we have a closer look at the rear we actually have several mounting options. We have two holes to mount like a carbon fiber bracket that attaches to the most common wheelbase. It's pretty much the same as on any dash, so I haven't mounted that here. But what's great, it also comes with a mount like this that basically lets you mount to the wheelbase and then offset it. And this is just using the GoPro mounting system. It comes with a very nice aluminum arm. I did 3D print a shorter one here to bring it closer to the wheelbase, but you can pretty much use any GoPro mounting accessories. Or you can also, if you do not want to use any of the mounts provided by Solpak, remove this thing. And we do have a quarter inch thread below this mounting point. And what's good about this, you can mount these magic camera arms to it, for example. So if you have a very odd position where to mount this, grab one of those magic arms. This is a small rig one. They are available in different sizes, like for pretty much any use case. And then you can clamp this somewhere to your rig. It comes either with another quarter inch screw or with one of those clamps. Clamp it to your rig, position it, tighten the screw, and then it's fixed in place. SimCore dashes also come with this, and I think every dash should have it because it's just super convenient. And especially with dash, it's always kind of hard to mount, especially when you use extensions and then the monitors in the way. And if you can just use these magic arms, it just makes your life so much easier. If I was very nitpicky, one thing to criticize maybe is like, the countersunk screw here is not perfectly flush with the bracket, but let's be honest, that's not a big deal. But yeah, overall, very good build quality, very good mounting options. I think this is as close to perfect as it gets. And I also want to explain you a little bit how the internals of a dash work like. So we'll take it apart and check if the build quality on the internals is just as good. I think it's just the four screws in the front that we need to remove. Yeah, then you see the electronics are mounted to the front and this is just the housing with just a little cutout for the USB connector. One nice detail, some people like to use super, super long screws because, well, people. <laughs> uh, it's good that they put some holes in the PCB so you don't destroy the PCB. Just don't, like, I'm sure there are people that manage to use screws that will go back <laughs> to the four core, but it's a nice detail. You can see that the Vocore is actually directly soldered on top of this board here. Very clean implementation, but let's actually remove the ribbon cable so I can take it apart even further. Okay, now we have the PCB here. We'll talk about that in a second. And we'll also have the unit with a display and the buttons. <laughs> It does look very, very well. They use 3D printed light blockers, but um, Solpak actually told me that newer revisions of this dash have these light blockers as a part of the aluminum housing. It will do exactly the same thing, will just be a little bit easier to assemble. But yeah, this, this does look very good. And if we have a look at the PCB, we actually have for a dashboard quite a lot going on here. You can see here, this is where the USB signal gets in. Then it gets routed to this USB hub over there. The hub distributes the USB signal to the processor and also to the Vocor here. There's also like a switching power supply, which is a little bit redundant here because it just takes the five volt and provides five volts. So this doesn't do anything. There's also a little power supply here that creates 3.3 volt for the processor. Processor being used is the RP2040 Raspberry Pi chip. And I assume this dashboard also runs the DDC software like their steering wheel probably. And this is all done very well, very clean. If you care about the details a little bit, we have a common mode filter here that basically like the USB signal is a differential signal. So it's always two data lines and the processor or the hub will basically take the difference between those lines. And the common mode filter will basically filter out every noise that is on both signals because the difference out of a noise on both data lines 
is basically non-existent. And then we have a little ESD protection and that goes into the hub. On the top is a little level shifter that takes the 3.3 volt signal from the RP2040 and makes it a 5 volt signal for the LEDs around here. If I wanted to improve something here, I would change the layout slightly and take the hub and move it over here. It's always good to have as short data lines as possible with the Vocor, but this is a very clean PCB and I think Solpak did a great job with this. To set up this dash and sim hub, very easy. Go to the Solpak website, go to support, download the Solpak dashboard, just install it by clicking on it and also download the Solpak sim hub plugin. This is a DLL file you want to put in um, program files x86, then search for sim hub and just paste it into this folder, then restart SimHub. It should detect the plugin automatically and ask whether you want to use it, so obviously <laughs> use it. And then the typical go to devices, add the Solpak dash as a device here, select the dashboard and you're pretty much good to go. The buttons and touchscreen zones should automatically be assigned here. You can see it here, controls. And that means that you can cycle through the color themes when you touch the screen, but we actually need to be in the game for it to work. It also comes with a really good LED profile. I think you don't really need to customize it a lot. I think the one that is in here is amazing. To customize the dashboard further, head over to the Solpak plugin menu. And then you see that the XR5 display in this case is connected, so everything is fine. Here you can basically customize, wait, let me actually get the dash out of the idle screen. And now you can see I can switch between the different color themes by just tapping the screen or I can switch between the different widgets that they provide with the buttons here. It's really very well done. There's definitely a ton of data on this dash and I, I just think visually it also looks very good. But you can further customize it here. For example, left thumb mode, you can ignore thumb mode, it basically for the dash, it means what is being shown in the widgets on the bottom. So if you, for example, want to see the traction control here, instead of the ABS, you can select it here. There are five data zones that you can customize with a lot of stuff. Then if you don't like these color themes, you can also go to a blackout dash. Looks like this, a little bit more traditional, but I like the, the colorful one. Then here you can also toggle on and off a red light warning, disable the speed indicator. There's a night mode that will basically dim down the display or like show it with colors that are not as distracting while you're driving at night. I think this is a very, very cool idea. I've seen that on the lovely dash as well. You can also assign a button to toggle this night mode. Then you can enable or disable this idle screen or also customize what's being shown in the idle screen here, the driver tag. And yeah, the bottom part here, this is only for their wheel. You can ignore this on the dashboard. But if we head over to the XR5 display tab, there's some more customization that you can do. It will basically let you enable and disable the button illumination or this uh, light bar on the bottom. Also, when you're driving, the, the light bar on the bottom will show your delta currently. You can disable that here if you want to. And one thing that is very cool is like the ref light customization. Let me quickly run a replay here so we get some data. But car specific animations, as of today, only works on iRacing, but basically mimics the exact LED behavior of the car in the game. You can get this for any dash or shift lights if you download the LED profile from Yoop. But I think it's very cool to see that they have the car specific animations built in. If you don't like that car specific thing, I'm typically not a big fan. I like to have like a uniform thing that is the same on every car so I can get used to it. Then there are several options here as well. You can, for example, here linear blue to red or linear red to yellow mirrored blue to red, where it will basically meet in the middle. There are tons of options here, and I just think the SimUp implementation of this dash is done really good. So yeah, to sum it up, together with the AlphaTag dashboard, the Solpak one would be my favorite dashes on the market. If I was using a dash, I think it would be this one. The hardware is just very well done, a lot of attention to detail. The SimUp implementation is great. I did have the occasional Vocor tearing issue where the image would basically like splits and appear in a different orientation, but after changing out the USB cable, this issue was gone. I know how picky the Vocors are. Sometimes a slightly out of spec cable can make it do these things. It's just, it can happen. It's not a big deal. After changing out the cable, it was gone. If you use any device with a Vocor, I always highly recommend to plug it into a powered USB hub that also helps with these tearing issues. And if I want to be really critical here, one thing that I would love to see improved, they use a virtual COM port to transmit the data from SimHub to the dash, 
which works perfectly fine, but I would love to see a USB HID message instead because the virtual COM ports sometimes get grabbed by other software like NZXT Cam or a Slicer for a 3D printer or something and then SimUp cannot see the LED. This does not happen with HID messages directly sent to the dash. It can happen with the virtual COM port implementation that Solpak uses here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. To sum it up, very good job Solpak. The dash is absolutely amazing and definitely gets my recommendation if you're looking for a high-end dashboard. In general, I think Solpak makes great stuff. Having reviewed this dashboard, I would love to test out their Spectra XR wheel. If it's up to that standard, then I think it's an amazing wheel as well. But that's pretty much it for the review. If you like it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.